<laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> Little Kid's First Big Book of Why by Amy Shields Why do balloons float? Why do eyeglasses work? Why do I have to eat vegetables? Why does soapy water make bubbles? Oh my goodness, loads and loads of questions. I'm going to see what's inside. Let's see. Oh, there's a note. It says, this book was recommended by Marcel. I hope you like them. I miss you from Marcel. Oh, thanks, Marcel. That's so kind of you. I've Lucy's written her name at the top there so that it doesn't get lost. <gasps> Look at this big question mark. Ha <laughs> ha. We know about question marks, don't we? Brilliant. Oh, and then you showed me about the contents. Oh, what shall I find out about today? Hmm. I think I'd like to know, why do boats float? And so I'm going to go to page 62 to find out why boats float. Now, 62 is number six and then a two. 35, 47, 49, 65. Oh, too far. Let me see. 62. Aha! Okay. Let's see. Why do boats float? Look, there's the O sound and another O sound. Same one, same graphene. Boats float. Why do boats float? Boats float because as they push their weight on the water, the water pushes back. This is called buoyancy. The shape of a boat also helps the water push back with enough force to hold the boat up. Next time you go for a swim, see how your body works in the water. If you lie flat on the water, it is easier to float. If you hug your knees and ball up, you will sink. Hmm, okay, well next time I go for a swim I will. I wonder when the next time I go for a swim is. Hmm, let's have a look here. Float a boat experiment. A flat bottom gives water more to push against. Experiment with different shapes of boats. You'll need a bowl of water and some Play-Doh. Hmm, I don't have any Play-Doh, so I'm just going to use maybe different uh, objects and see if they float or if they sink. So I'm going to see if they've got a big flat bottom or if they don't. So it says, if you do have uh, Play-Doh, you can make a flat bottom boat shape with a piece of Play-Doh. So nice and flat. Place your boat on the water. Does it float? Now make a round ball with a piece of Play-Doh. Will it float or sink? Experiment with other shapes. So that's what you could do, but I don't have all the right things for that. So you could either do the same as me or, or do what it says in the book. Oh, what amazing book! I'm so excited about my first experiment! It's a proper science experiment. Right, let me see. I'm going to get all my stuff ready. One second. Right, okay, da da! I've got all my stuff ready. So here's my bowl of water, and then here are all the things I'm going to uh, try and see if they float or not. And then here I've written them all down. So under the word object, 
So that's what I'm testing. And then I've written this word, which is predict. And that is just a super fancy way of saying guess. OK, so I'm going to guess whether I think it's going to float or if it's going to sink. OK, so I'll write that next to it there. And then I'm going to check. I'm going to put it in the water and I'm going to see if it floats or if it sinks. And we're going to see if Marcel's lovely book um, has, is right. We're going to see if, it, if things with a, with a flat surface, with a bigger surface area, float and the things with a smaller surface area uh, sink to the bottom. So let's see. Right, let's see what the first thing is on our list. Leaf. Leaf. Okay, leaf. So here we go. A leaf. Now, what do we think? What do we predict? Do we think the leaf is going to float or do we think it's going to sink to the bottom? Hmm, I think it's pretty wide and it's pretty light. So I think it's probably going to float. What do you think at home? You could write it down too if you wanted. OK, so I'm going to write down for float as my prediction. OK, so I'm just going to get my pen and I'm going to write for my prediction is my guess is that it's going to float. That's what I'm guessing. OK, and now let's see if it does float or if it sinks. Let's see. Here we go. Is it floating or is it sinking? That's right, you're absolutely right, it's floating. So we got that one right, fantastic. Okay, I think we'll do that one in purple. Okay, so we're gonna say F stood for floating and does it float is the question mark. So we're gonna write yes. In fact, I'm just gonna do a tick to say yes, it does float. Okay, and then the next one, is nail nail okay let's have a look at the nail hmm so this one is metal and it's quite heavy and uh hmm it's not very flat is it so it doesn't it's not going to be it's not going to be like the leaf that's floating on top of the water i think it's going to sink what do you think you think it's going to sink too? Mm, I think we're right, aren't we? Okay, right, so we're going to write down s for sink and under our prediction, s for sink, and then we're going to chuck it in and see if it floats or it sinks. Ready? One, two, three, go. It did sink. It's gone right to the bottom. It went so quickly I didn't even see it. Oh my goodness, we were right again. Hooray! Yes! So, it, this one, does it float? No, it doesn't. It sinks. So we're going to put a cross. So we've got both of them right so far. Amazing. Well done, us. Okay, let's see what the next one says. This one says, feather, feather. Feather. Now, the feather is very small, so I'll try not to drop it. In fact, Lucy, can you just hold it? Thanks. Uh, okay, here's the feather. I just found it in the garden. It's a little baby bird feather, not a big, big feather, because I would think a, definitely a big feather would float, wouldn't it? So should we see if this little tiny feather floats? Hmm. I think it probably will, but it might not float for very long. It might then just sink afterwards, because it is in a, like a little ball, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, yeah, let's say yes, but we're not sure. Okay, so um, our prediction is f for float. There we go, that's what we're guessing. Okay, and let's pop it in the water. In fact, Lucy, can you do it for me? Yep, sure, here you go. Ready, one, two, three. Oh, yes. Well, that definitely floats, doesn't it? Gosh, it's right on the top of the water. Oh, OK. I take it all back. I was completely wrong. It's definitely, definitely floating. So we're going to give this one. Is it floating? Yes, it is. Give it a tick. OK. My goodness me, we are flying through these. Right here, let's have a go at a spoon. 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 So here's my spoon. Now this is heavy. 
it has got quite a flat bit there, look, but it's it's heavy and it's not that flat. I think it's going to sink. What do you think? You think it might float? Oh, maybe it will float because of this flat bit. Let's have a look. Hmm. It's sort of a bit flat. Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, let's try. Let's see if it floats. We'll put float down, okay? Let's see, because it doesn't matter if you'll get your prediction wrong, does it? You're just guessing, aren't you? You're using, it's like an educated guess, isn't it? You're thinking, hmm, is this, is this, does this fit the scenario? So we think well, this one might sink, don't we? I think it's probably going to sink, but it might float, but we're not sure. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh no, straight to the bottom. That is definitely a sinker, isn't it? Not a floater, but a sinker. Okay, so what did we say? Oh, we said sink. Perfect. Oh, sorry, for a second then I thought we'd got it wrong, but we didn't. So it doesn't float, so we're going to put cross. It doesn't float. Look, we've got float, doesn't float, float, doesn't float. A pattern. F, S, F, S. Oh my goodness. So the next one in the pattern would be, let's see tin foil. Now this is metal isn't it? Same as the spoon because it's made of tin. So as we know we saw the metal both these times have have sunk haven't they? The spoon sunk and the nail sunk. So this is just more metal. So do you think it's probably it's likely to sink isn't it? Because if the nail sank and the spoon sank and they're both made out of metal then probably this metal is going to sink. Don't you think? Hmm what do you think? Hmm. I don't know. Well, shall we just... I, I think I'm going to write sink because it seems like the metal, all the other metal things have sunk. So it seems likely that, that this is going to sink too. So I'm going to put s for sink. It's annoying because it ruins the pattern, but there we are. Okay, so metal sinks is what we think, isn't it? So let's see if this metal sinks. Oh my goodness, it didn't sink. Look at it, it's floating on top. It's floating on the water at the very top. Oh my goodness. So actually, the tin foil does float. Even though it's metal, it does float. So it needs a tick there. That's so interesting. So we actually got that one wrong. That wasn't right. It actually floats. Wow, that's so interesting. Oh my goodness. Oh, look, the next one says tin foil ball. Okay, so let's take this bit of tin foil out because we want to reuse it, don't we? Reduce, reuse, reduce, reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah. Okay, so this time it says tin foil ball. So we're going to scrunch it up into a tiny little ball. See, so squish it up as hard as I can go. Okay, just do it on the desk for a tiny bit as long as I don't scratch the desk. Otherwise I'll be in trouble. Okay, here we go. So now it's still made out of metal. It's the same piece that was just floating. It's still quite light. Probably weighs the same actually, doesn't it? But this time, instead of being a nice flat piece, it's a small round ball. What do we think this time? Do we think it's going to float or do we think it's going to sink? Oh, Marcel, this is so fun. Thank you so much for that wonderful book. It's got some fantastic ideas in it. OK, so do we think this ball is going to float or if it's going to sink? Well, I think it's probably going to... It's probably going to... Oh, no, I don't know. I think it's probably going to float because it's the same piece of metal, isn't it? So it's probably going to float because it did float before, didn't it? Just because it's changed shape. It hasn't changed weight. It hasn't changed what it's made out of. It's exactly the same bit. It's just that it's now in a ball. So that makes sense, doesn't it? That it would do the same. Okay, so I'm going to say that I think it's going to float. I predict that it's going to float. I guess that it's going to float. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh! It is floating, look. 
There we go. That's very interesting because I wasn't really sure about that one, to be honest. So there we are. I've learned something there as well. So there we go. The, the, the tin foil floats no matter what. I wonder why. It's very interesting because when, when the Play-Doh in the book, when the Play-Doh is in a small round bowl, ball, it sinks. And when it's a nice flat bit, it floats. But that's not true of tin foil, is what we've learned. So um, we can give this a tick and say, yes, the tin foil ball also floats. Now, here we have lolly stick. Lolly stick. Where's my lolly stick? Ah, here it is. Lolly stick. So. Do we think this is going to float or sink? It's made out of wood, which is quite heavy, but it's got quite a big surface area, hasn't it? It's quite wide and flat. So maybe it'll be like the leaf and float. What do you think? You think it's going to float too? Okay, great. Let's write a, an F next to lolly stick and see if we are right. Okay, ready? Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. <gasps> it does float, doesn't it? Look, it's floating on top of the leaf now. It's just pushing the leaf underneath. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my goodness me, there you go. Do you remember when um, uh, Wilfred made a raft in the story, and in the Brambley Hedge story, and he made it out of wood? So that makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, that wood, wood does sometimes float. I wonder if we had a small chunk of wood, if that would still float, or if um, it needs to be nice and flat and thin like that. Who knows? Maybe you could try and find out at home. That would be amazing. So, uh, does it float, the lolly stick float? Yes, it does, so we can give it a tick. Okay, the last one I just thought would be interesting because um, it's actually a drop of oil because I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at oil in water, uh, just because it is just interesting to have a look. Um, and so, yeah, so I was just wondering uh, whether you think the oil is going to float or if you think the oil is going to sink. Or, because it's a liquid, do you think it's just going to blend together and they're just going to, you know, mix in with each other? What do you think? Hmm, it's a thinker, isn't it? So here's the, here's the oil, this is what I was talking about. Here's some oil, okay, it's just regular cooking oil, and I'm going to put a blob of it in the water. And what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to um, sink? Do you think it's going to float? Or do you think it's going to perhaps mix in with the rest of the water? I am not sure, so I think, I think when I make salad dressing, I think the oil in the salad dressing often does it go to the top or to the bottom i can't remember or maybe it's the balsamic vinegar that goes to the top oh dear i can't remember so i'm just going to have a guess and i'm going to guess that it will float because i think that's to, i think it's to do with we'll have to see we'll have to see let's find out so i'm going to write a f for float and then we're going to very carefully obviously if you're going to do this at home ask um, someone for permission before you put oil in there okay so can you see that yep so oh dear you can't actually let me just empty out the things that are already in there so that you can see see better okay I oh, will leave the we'll leave the feather in there okay are you ready let's go let's see a little blob Woo! Can you see? Let me see if I can blow. There we go. Can you see the blobs of oil? Look, they are sitting on the top of the water. So oil floats on the water, on the very top. Wow, there we go. I wasn't sure, but we had a guess and we had a try and we actually got it right, didn't we? My goodness me. Wow, so does oil float? And we can say, yes, it does. Tick. 
Wow, what an amazing bit of science. I really, really enjoyed that. And I wonder if you'd like to have a go at home too. All you need is a piece of paper that says object, predict and float, and then a list of things that mummy or daddy says is okay to, to put in the water. Okay, so you need a bowl of water and then a list of things, you know, whatever, whatever mummy and daddy say you can, you can put in there. Okay, um, that would be amazing. I can't wait to see all of your fantastic science experiments. Don't forget that it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Predicting you have to do before you do the experimenting. Otherwise, it's not predicting because you already know the answer. Okay, so predicting is when you're just guessing and you're thinking of all the different times in your life when you maybe have seen something similar. Or you've thought, oh, maybe that's true. Okay, and then you think, oh, okay, based on all the things I've thought, of, I've thought I know, and I think I've seen, I think then this is going to happen. Okay. And that's what scientists do, and that's how you know that you're being a fantastic scientist if you're doing that. So you write down your prediction, and then you write down either yes it floats, or cross if it doesn't float. Okay, so we actually nearly got all of them right. We just were wrong about the tinfoil. So, there we go. Fantastic. Uh, chocolate chocolate button? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm afraid it's time for phonics. We're, we're running a bit late, actually. <gasps> oh my goodness, quick, I'll get the desk tidy. See if you can get all your things ready by the time I count to zero. Ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero! Hello everyone and welcome to Chocolate Chocolate Button Teaches Phonics. We're going to start with doing some hand pushes. So here we go, you're going to put your hands close together like that. In fact, Lucy, can you show them please? Sure. Put your hands together and then put your um, right angles here so that they go straight up as much as possible. And then you're going to push as hard as we can for 10 seconds. Ready? And one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. And again, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Oh my goodness me. Okay, the next ones we're gonna do are lay our butterflies. So we're gonna put our fingers uh, out like that, and then we're gonna interlock our thumbs like that. And then we're going to do beautiful butterflies in a figure of eight on its side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to try and go the other way. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Woohoo! The next one is doorknob turns. Okay, doorknob turns. So we're going to put our hands out in front of us and then we're going to turn the handles. Ready? Hands out in front. Cup it as if you've got a handle inside your palms ready and then you're going to go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to go back the other way. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, and shake them out. The next one is bow politely. And so for this one, you put your hands opposite each other again. Okay. And then this time, your fingers are going to bow to each other. So first of all, you're going to start off with your thumbs and they're going to bow. Can you see they're bowing to each other? And then your index finger, your Peter pointer, they're going to bow. And then your middle finger. That's it. And then your ring fingers. And then your little fingers. And while they're bowing, try to keep all the others straight. Back the other way, ring finger, middle finger, Peter pointers, and then thumbs. 
Okay, try and do it a bit quicker. There we go, all bow together and shake them out. Fantastic. Right, the last one we're going to do is we're going to roll a pencil. So you're going to get a pencil um, or a pen and you're going to try and roll it with your thumb all the way down your hand and then ooh, and then you're going to try and roll it all the way back up to the top. Okay, so you're trying to keep your hand sort of flat and you roll the pencil down. There we go. And then try it with the other hand. Ooh, I find this one tricky. Okay, thumbs up if you're finished. Are you ready for handwriting? Fantastic, let's get going. We are going to start off with some hills. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to do some hills that are further apart. So we're going to go across, up, across, down, across, up, across, down. That's it. We call this one the Loch Ness Monster, don't we? There we go. And then we're going to practice our W, like we did uh, from yesterday. Oh, sorry, we're going to do um, our battlements first. And then we're going to practice our W, so up, down, across, up, down, across, and flick. And if you can do a whole line joined up, even better. There we go, and the last one is our number, isn't it? And our number is the number 15 today. So we're going to go down for our number one because our 15 is a one and then a five, isn't it? And then for a five, we start further away, go back, down, and then come back this way round and down. Back, down, around. One, back, down, around. A bit like a letter S, isn't it? Back, down, around. Back, down, around, down, back, down, around, down, back, down, around, down, back, down, around. There we go. Sorry, there's a bit of light on there. Uh, I can't, I can't get rid of it, I'm afraid. It's such a sunny, beautiful day. Our letter today is the letter R, which makes the sound R. Okay. Um, now, some of you have asked if we can do um, a capital R as well as a lowercase r. So we'll do both uh, so that you can see. Okay, right, let's have a go. So the capital R, um, we go down and then you go around and then straight. Okay, that's the capital R. And then the lowercase r, you start on the line, you go up, down, up, and across. Okay, so for capital, straight down, and you do actually take your pen off to go start, start at the top bit again. And then you go up, down, up, and across. I guess for a capital R, you could go up, down, up, in order to keep your pen on. Um, if you wanted to, that would be absolutely fine. Right, let's try it with the left hand. So we're going to go straight down, around, and across, and then 
we're going to do up, down, up and across. Okay, so we're going to go down, take your pin off, around and flick and then we're going to go up, down, up and across. And then if we're going to do uh, with do the capital R without taking our pen off, with the left hand we're going to go up, down, up, around, and flick. And then we're going to go up, down, up, and across. There we go. Right, so if we're going to do this on, uh, on the lines, what we're going to do is we're going to add the capital R is much bigger than the lowercase r. The capital R goes almost to the top. Okay, like that. And then the lowercase r only goes up to halfway. So we start on the line up, down, up, and across. Okay, so the capital and then the lowercase. There we go. And now for my right hand. Can you see the difference in heights? The difference in heights, sorry. There we go. We don't join uh, the capitals to other letters, so we won't practice doing that. But for, for, the, for the R, we go up, down, up, across. And then down, up, across. Down, up, across. And it ends up looking a bit like a fence. Okay. So I'm not taking my pen off at all, I'm just joining them together. Now, if I wanted to join yesterday's letter with the R, I could do W, across, down, and across. See? See if you can have a go. This this is at the beginning of the word write as in using a pen to write a letter. There we go. How did you get on? Don't worry if the joining bit is too hard, just keep practicing keeping them separate. That's totally fine. It's really, really good just to keep practicing up and down and keep that pen, those pen skills going while we can't see each other. Okay, let's move on to some phonics. Woo! -hoo! Can you remember all of our new brown words? Let's find out. See if you can say the word before I do. Like, me, so, don't, go, he, whose, have 
Mr. Out. They. From. Said. What. It's some she we time your who Be whole, then, when, one, about, children, Just that called were looked help you. Do house little misses people. Oh no, sorry, just oh. There come went by. Oh, my goodness! Well done, everyone! Well, good concentrating. I am very impressed. There were lots of words there. How did you get on with them? I hope they weren't too tricky. Right, don't worry if they were either because that's what we're doing here. We're just learning, aren't we? And mistakes make perfect and practice makes perfect. Okay, so we'll keep practicing and then we'll get better and better and better and better and better and better and better. And better. Just like we did at the beginning when some of you found some of those words really, really tricky and now you can do them without even thinking about them. Okay, so don't worry. Right, let's think about some phonics, some sounds now. I just wanted to remind you before we do the sounds that this grapheme ED can make a t sound at the end of a word and that would be for example looked. It can make an id sound like in the word haunted. It makes an id sound when actually it's ED, very annoying, id. And it also makes a d sound. So for example, in the word l, um, boomed, it's ed at the end, even though it sounds like it's just a d, okay? Um, it also makes an ed sound, actually, annoyingly at the end of a word. Um, and I thought of a few, like bed, for example, and ted. So it does also make an ed sound, but those are the, those are the four that I could think of. So it's, it sometimes makes a t, sometimes makes an id, sometimes makes an ed, and sometimes makes a d sound. Oh my goodness, you can see why I wanted to remind you because it is not easy to remember all of those different sounds. The other one I wanted us to have a look at today was um, a new one, and we're gonna focus on it today. This is our sound for today. And this one makes the sound or. Okay, so this spelling makes the sound or, okay? We'll have a, a little look at it 
um, in more detail later on. But for now, we're just going to remember it as or. Okay? Right, let's get going on the sounds then. See if you can say the sound before I do. E I J U W O H A Ah. Ow. Oo or u. Uh. You. You. Oh. Oo. O. I B O Ch Z O E E A uh, Oi A Ul A Qua A O G Ing R Air I Ung Your or 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 a t v w ear. out p oi or k y e i e Ed, Ed, or D. As I explained earlier, we are going to concentrate on the sound OR today. So we've got four different ways that we can 
uh, read or spell the word, the sound, or now. We've got um, AU, which is our newest one. We've got this one, URE, which is a very rare one um, because usually it makes your sound, but ever so occasionally it makes the OR sound. We've got AW, which makes OR sound quite a lot, but usually at the end of the word, sort of. And here is OR, used often uh, in the middle of the word, but sometimes at the end of the word too. So we're going to read through some words now. We're going to concentrate on, on our new uh, grapheme first, the AU, and then we'll sort through some other ones um, just to kind of have a look and see if we can spot any rules. Bull, or, ch, launch, launched. The rocket was launched into space, launch. Okay, and as you can see, there's the AU sound, uh, grapheme, making the OR sound. Okay, so we're just going to underline that so that we can remember it. And remember, it is always good to make a list of these yourselves to help you remember, um, just by doing that at the top of the page. Okay, so we've got OR, OR, NCH, LAUNCH. Okay, so that can go there. The next one is this word. All, haul, haul means to um, pull something along, okay? So to take something somewhere, to haul it, okay? It doesn't mean this spelling isn't the spelling like, oh, let's go to the school hall to rehearse our class assembly. Not haul like that, that is H-A-L-L. -L. This is haul as in to, to move it somewhere else, okay? So we'll put that one there. And then here we've got another AU spelling, this time with a capital letter, because it's the name of a month. Let's see. August. 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 Ah, there we go. August. So that's how we write the word August with this AU spelling. Okay, let's put that there like that. August. There we go. Oh, sorry. My pile is... Oh, here's another one with a capital A. We've got autum. Autumn. This time it's got a capital letter because it's the name of a season. All names have capital letters, don't they? Just like your name has one. Okay, so we're going to... Autumn. The name of the month, autumn. It's got a funny old way of spelling autumn because it's U-M-N at the end. It's very weird, isn't it? Autumn. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Just going to move it so that you can see it. Oh, this one is the word auth or author. Author. Now, author has got an or sound with an A-U, hasn't it, at the front. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it has an O-R spelling. Author. Author. An author is someone who writes books. So, shall we put it in the A-U or the O-R? Oh my goodness. Right, well, let's put it in the A-U for now. And then we will, um, we can always add another one to the O-R at the end. Okay, here's another A-U. Thank you. All, Paul, and it's got a capital letter again, so we know that this is a name, Paul, the name Paul. Okay, there's a big, um, there's a big church, isn't there, in uh, London called St Paul's. St Paul's, oh, it's a cathedral, isn't it, of course, famously, it says it in the name. <laughs> so we've got St Paul's, the cathedral, and that's spelled with this A-U in the middle there. Okay, so there's another one. For the AU section. Oh, this one's a bit longer. Let's see what this one means. It says <sighs> or n t haunt ed. Ah, now remember that ed can say id as well. So let's see if it's haunted. Haunted, isn't it? Yeah, that's what that one is. Haunted. It means that there there are ghosts there. If you believe in such things, obviously. Haunted, so that's got the AU sound in it. Haunted. 
And then last one with the AU for now is this one. This is what I long for. Ort o auto m at mat ik automatic an automatic car okay it means that you don't have to change the gears they change themselves by themselves okay automatic fantastic so there we're going to underline the au there okay and we're going to put that one there now we're going to have a go at reading some other words with the or sound in them just so that we can get better at it okay so let's sort through these ones very quickly Here's one, sure, sure. So that's going to go over in the UR section. Mature, mature. Mature means you're very grown up. So that's that one. You also get mature cheese, don't you? Which means it's very strong tasting. T or ch, torch. Ah, oh, yes, torch is going to go in the OR pile. St orm. Storm, O R again. K -orn. Corn, yes, please. I'd love some sweet corn. Short, short, short. Oh, that goes in the O R as well. Sp -ort. Sport, that's going to go in the O R. Oh, my goodness. Let's see what the next one is. K -l -or. Claw. Claw. Right, that's going to go in the AW one. L or N. Lawn. That's the AW graphene. D -r -or. Draw. And this is the one where you're using a pencil to draw something, not the type where you um have to pull it out of a chest draw okay and raw as in it's not being cooked not as in <laughs> but as in oh no this hasn't been cooked yet or oh yes this hasn't been cooked yet depending on what it is of course crawl crawl when you're a baby you crawl that's an A W sound. F or t fort. Oh, that's going to go in the O R pile. Dun 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 dun. Feel the force, force, Luke. There we go, force, there we go, that's going to go in the OR pile. Fork, again the OR pile. I'm just going to have a quick look at force again because I think it's on our spelling, so we just have a quick check. Force, the S sound, is made with a C, look, a letter C, okay, and an E. So that's just like in Lucy, for example, or Marcel. So force feel the force that's how it's spelled okay put that one at the top so you remember um let's see what the next one is law must obey the law i thought i saw a pussycat i did i did i saw a pussycat there we go that's also the type of saw that uh, you might use to cut something with Horn, 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 and the final one is this one. P or paw? Ha ha! Look at my paws. Look, there it is. Paw, 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 paw. That's the type of paw. Okay. My goodness, let's have a look. I'm going to change the focus so that we can have a little bit of a better look at our list. One second. There we go. So, what do we notice? 
we notice that there are quite a few or words with the AU sound, aren't there? We've got launch, hall, August, autumn, author, Paul, haunted, and automatic. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, are there any rules that we can see? Hmm. Well, it's never at the end of a word, is it? The AU spelling. So if you're hearing OR at the end of a word, you wouldn't use AU. Okay, because it's never at the end of the word. Let's have a look at this one. Sure and mature. They are actually the only two that I could think of. Okay, so that's pretty impressive, isn't it? So that's very, very rare. So you've just got to remember those two, basically. Sure and mature. They're the only two with that spelling of the OR sound until you get a bit older and you start using words like abdure. But to be honest, that's not a very common word anyway, even amongst adults. So don't worry too much. And then we've got these words. Now, these are mostly at the end, aren't they? So if your word ends in OR, you could guess probably it might be an AW. Apart from crawl and lawn. Oh, it's so annoying, isn't it, that they don't all fit the pattern. But other than that, all of them go at the AW at the end, don't they? So that's a really good shout. So if you hear the OR sound at the end, I would go for AW. Then let's look, in, look at the OR sound, uh, grapheme, sorry. Um, yeah, these are all in the middle, aren't they? Apart from in the word FOR. Please can I have a new guitar for my birthday? Okay, FOR. So that would also be uh, here, but it's the only one really that ends in OR. So. That's how we can, we can remember it then, isn't it? So AW goes at the end, if the sound OR is at the end, and OR or AU, if it goes in the middle, and if it's short or mature, then it's that URE spelling. I'm sorry we can't do any better than that. It's very annoying, isn't it? I am sorry. Um, let me just look at my spellings list so that I can just check I have been fair. Yes, I have. Okay, so that's totally fine. So hopefully, all of the words that we need for our quick write later on are on here. Okay, so I'm going to leave the, the, the screen so that you can copy those down if you like, just to kind of get really good at the OR sound. Okay, you don't have to, but it might be worth it, uh, worth it just to kind of uh, practice them and to remember where which word uses which grapheme. Okay, for the OR sound. Um, so you can press pause if you like with your pause, with your pause and uh, and then we'll move on to our quick write. Okay, see you in a second. Right, are you ready for our quick write? Fantastic! That is excellent news. Okay, so we are going to start with um, sound, words with the grapheme uh, AU, this one. Um, and then I'll tell you when we move on to other ones. Okay, so we're just trying to remember how to spell them. Don't worry if you don't. We're here to practice, aren't we? That's the whole point. Okay, so the first one is, please can you write the word August? August. And remember, it's the name of a month, so it needs a capital letter. So we're looking for or g a s t August. Or, g, a, s, t, August. In August, I hope I will be able to go to the beach. August. Number two is a really long word. See how you get on. It's the word automatic automatic. So we're looking for or t o m a t i k automatic. 
Now, it's a really long word, so let's use our syllables. Syllables, they're what you get when you take a word apart. We'd be miserable without syllables. They're what you get when you take a word apart. Right, okay, so we're going to use automatic four syllables, so no wonder it's hard to spell. So we've got the first syllable is or. Or, well that's nice and easy, we can spell or. The second one is to, or to, really I suppose, or to. So, we've got or, to, and then the next one is mat, m at, mat. And then the final syllable is ik, ik, or to. Automatic. Automatic. Okay? Well done. Um, and to put it into a sentence, one day I hope to have an automatic car so I don't have to keep changing gears when I'm driving in London. Automatic. Number three is the word author. Author author. Okay, remember this is the one with two or sounds in it. There's that one and then there's another one as well, author. Okay, um, and we spell it or, or. Three sounds, or, or. And my tongue is sticking out when I say th, or, th, or, author. When I grow up, I'd like to be an author. Author. The next one is another name. So it needs a capital letter and it's the name Paul. Paul. P or L. Paul. Paul. The next one is the word haunt, haunt, <sighs> or n t haunt, <sighs> or n t haunt. Ooh, the ghosts will come and haunt you. <laughs> well, they won't but that's a sentence with the word haunt in it. Haunt. Number six is using a different grapheme. Okay, it's using a different grapheme to the AU. We finished the AU grapheme now, okay? But this one is the grapheme that we use if the or sound is at the end of the word. Can you remember which one that was? Okay. Okay, so the next one, number six, is the word draw. Draw. D, r, or. Draw. Please, can you draw me a picture? Draw. Number seven is the word saw. Saw. <laughs> Saw. S or saw. I used a saw to cut some wood. Do you remember? Mr. Lee was, was, was watching over me to make sure I was okay. Saw. Number eight is the word poor. Poor. Or poor. Hi, poor. <laughs> Number nine is the word sure. 
So we've moved on from, from uh, the last craft room and we're just doing that one that was very, very rare. Do you remember which one that was? Sure. And remember, oddly, there's no H in it. So it should be sh, S-H, isn't it? But it's actually not. It's just an S making the sh sound. And then one of these graphemes making the or sound, but it's the one that's very rare that we hardly ever use. Number 10 is the word force. Force. Feel the force, Luke. Force. Okay, force. Which grapheme does the word force use? We've moved on to another one now, okay? So it's the one that we often use in the middle of the word and it's also probably, I think it's the first one we ever learned. Force. And remember that s sound is spelled the same way as it is in um, Lucy's name and in Marcel's name. Number 11 is the word fork. 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 F-O-R-K. Fork. Stick a fork in it and check it's ready. F -o -k fork. Now remember it's the k sound at the end. It's not going to be a curly k because it's at the end of the word. So it's going to be a kicking k at the end. Fork. Number 12 is the word torch. Torch. T or ch. Torch. I had to use my torch because it was dark. Torch. Torch. Now, number 13, 14 and 15 are just the three bonus ones because they are the tricky words that we learned yesterday. So see if you can try and remember how to spell those ones, okay? So don't worry at all if you can't. Sorry about the helicopter going over. I hope you can't hear that. Um, but we'll have a go, okay? So the first, uh, number 13, the next one anyway, is the word time. Time. T -I -M, T-I-M. Time. It's a tricky word, so it's spelled funny, a bit funny. And number 14 is the word called, called. I called by to see if you were okay. Called. I called your telephone, but you didn't pick up. Called. And the last one, my goodness me, it feels like we've been doing this for ages. My goodness, the last one is the word looked. 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 Now it's one of those, it's, do you remember with the, we did it earlier, the, the t sound at the end is actually made with ed. So we've got ul, uk, look. And then it ends with ed. That's what's making that t sound. Looked. I looked and looked and looked, but I could not find it anywhere. Looked. Okay, that's all of our quick write for today. My goodness me, you have worked hard. I'm so impressed. Right, let's see how you've got on. Remember, it doesn't matter how many you get right. What matters is that you're trying your hardest and trying to remember as we go through the words. So well done, everyone, just for getting through it, to be honest. OK, let's see how you got on. OK.
How did you get on? Well done. Nice work, everyone. Thank you very much for all your hard work. We've got one more sentence to write and then we have finished. So let's move on to our next job. For our final job today, we are going to write a sentence and then go through it together. So um, I've added two words just on to the whiteboard just to help you out because those two words are in our sentence and I don't think they're particularly easy words to spell. So I thought rather than struggling with the spelling on those ones, you could just uh, be concentrating on everything else. So those that's the word autumn and that's the word house. OK, so um, it doesn't matter if you if you would like to copy those spellings. If you want to have a go by yourself, totally do that. That's brilliant. But um, it's just in case you wanted a bit of extra support. OK, so we are going to write the sentence which goes like this. In the autumn, Paul said that his house was haunted. OK, in the autumn, Paul said his house was haunted. OK, so we're going to start off with the word in. And it's the beginning of a sentence, so we need a capital letter. In. That's it. Finger space. The. Mm -hmm -hmm spells the. Don't let it trick you. In the autumn. There's autumn for you if you want it. Again, spell it yourself if you'd like to. Autumn. In the autumn. Paul. Paul, remember it's his name, so it needs a capital letter, Paul, said, said, so it should say at the moment, in the autumn, Paul said, that, that, my tongue is coming right out of my mouth when I say that, that, in the autumn, Paul said that, His, in the autumn, Paul said that his house house, and that's written there for you if you want it. Again, you can just spell it your own way if you'd like to. In the autumn, Paul said that his house was haunted, 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 haunted. In the autumn, Paul said that his house was haunted. I'm just going to count how many words that is so you can check your work. In one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten words you should have on your sheet. If you haven't got them, just go through with your finger and just check. It should say, in the autumn, Paul said that his house was haunted. OK, right. I guess it is my turn. OK, great. Let's see how we get on. Right, Lucy, first of all, we need a capital letter because it's a, the beginning of a sentence. OK, in, in, uh, finger space, that's right, in, finger space, so leave a finger space, in, the, T-H-E spells the, don't let it trick you, in, the, finger space, autumn, Oh, 
Whoops. Not another M, it's an N at the end, Lucy. Sorry, beg your pardon. In the autumn, uh, Paul, wasn't it? Paul. Capital P for Paul, Lucy. Okay, thank you. Put all. In the autumn, Paul said. S A I D 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 said. Said. In the autumn, Paul said that. Th. Ah. T. Paul said that his his house finger space house his house was was haunted <sighs> or mm, and then it's e d remember lucy oh yeah okay e d okay in the autumn paul said that his house was haunted <gasps> We've forgotten something. Have we? What have we forgotten? Let's see if we've got the right number of words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got ten words, so that's not what's missing. We've got a capital letter at the beginning. We've got a capital letter for autumn because that's the name of the season. And we've got a capital letter for Paul because that's his name. So what can we be missing? Um... I've got it. It's a full stop at the end. Yes, you're absolutely right. We have forgotten to put a full stop at the end. There we go. That looks much better, doesn't it? My goodness. In the autumn, Paul said that his house was haunted. Oh my goodness me. How did you get on with your sentence? I think for one last thing, we could just underline all of the or sounds in our word. So let's have a look. In the autumn, there's one. Paul, Paul said that his house was haunted. So there's another one. So three or sounds and all of them were made with the AU grapheme. <laughs> well, we were focusing on that today, weren't we? So it does make sense. Thanks, Chocolate Chocolate Button. That's reassuring to know. OK, well, thank you so much for all of your hard work today. You have done incredibly well. What a long session that's been. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have remembered that or can now be made with AU, very rarely with URE, uh, often at the end of a word with AW, and often in the middle of the word with O-R. OK, thank you very much, and I shall see you all again tomorrow for some more phonics with Chocolate Chocolate Button. OK, bye, bye, elbow bump, elbow bump, bye.